The letter was from Columbia Records. Dear Jean, is there a story behind Star Trek which hasn't been told? An intimate or very personal beginning? If so, we think it belongs on the inside Star Trek record. <laughs> All right. I can talk about things now that would have embarrassed me once. And maybe my story could be helpful to you if you're somehow different from other people or handicapped. Most of us are in one way or another. I guess Star Trek had its first beginnings in the fact that as a child I was different, handicapped. I had difficulty breathing, eyes that didn't work well in bright sunlight, spindly-legged, weak, uncoordinated. I wasn't a very pretty thing. And I suffered the awful embarrassments that only a child can feel. I don't suppose every writer has to start like that. But if I had been the things that I dreamed of being, agile, athletic, admired and popular, I know now that I never would have ended up with as happy a life. I became a reader. Thank God I became a reader. I lived in a dream world because it was a hell of a lot better world. I was Dr. Doolittle. I was Zane Gray's lonely cowboy, an explorer. Lots of it trash. I was an Indian fighter, fearless soldier, a fighter ace. If you've read Peanuts, I was Snoopy. I fought the Red Baron many times. Certainly, part of Star Trek was written by that boy, dreaming maybe as you do of a better world in, in which people would look past our exteriors and see whatever loveliness we have inside us. I remember being about eight years old in the backyard, sitting in a soap carton, pretending that it was a great vessel of some kind. And the bold, strong person hidden inside of me, he was the captain. I remember it was an enclosed vessel because I had a second soap carton pulled down over my head. After sitting there for several hours, still encased in soap cartons, I heard the concerned voices of my parents speculating whether my illness had led to brain damage. Ah, how lovely all our daughters are inside. How fearless all our sons, if only we could see it. I remember helping my father clean the garage. Actually, he was cleaning. I was facing the firing squad. The bullets caught me, spun me to the ground, and as I lay there, bravely dying, I looked up to see Dad watching me with pity on his face, assuming I was suffering some new kind of seizure. Years later, something brought me back to reality. Science fiction. Yes, incredible. Science fiction taught me how to live in the real world. Thank you, Homer, my ex-convict friend. Thank you for John Carter of Mars. It it made your cage more bearable. It helped rescue me from mine. And thank you, Claude, for that first copy of Astounding Stories magazine. Sorry you, you didn't reach 16 and grow out of your illness as I did. I was lucky, a miracle of adolescence. My body mended. I actually became stronger than average. But science fiction saved me from that, too. Saved me from the perils of a strong body. I had learned by then that reality is incredibly larger infinitely more exciting than the flesh-and-blood vehicle we travel in here. If you read science fiction, the more you read it, the more you realize that you and the universe are part of the same thing. Science still knows practically nothing about the real nature of matter, energy, dimension, or time, and even less about those remarkable things called life and thought. But whatever the meaning and purpose of this universe, you are a legitimate part of it. And since you are part of the all that is, part of its purpose, there is more to you than just this brief speck of existence. You are just a visitor here in this time and this place, a traveler through it. What a difference that makes. As a traveler here, it no longer crushes you that this world is not always fair or orderly or understandable. Your passport allows you to fix what you can, to love, to refuse to take part in ugliness. But meanwhile, you are delighted that this is such a varied colorful, exciting place. As a traveler, you're not here to judge, but to experience. You begin to feel a new affection for the life forms here. You no longer feel threatened that some may be greater or lesser than you. It's only important that you've been given this marvelous opportunity to enjoy this trip, to learn from it, and in my case, write about it. Perhaps you know where I'm leading. On a trip like this, and it is a trip, its loveliness is not in the sameness of people and things but in their incredible variety. Eventually, this led me to the Star Trek statement, Idik, infinite diversity from infinite combinations. Thank whatever created us, we are different, 
each of us, and everything around us. To the end of time, if it ever does end, no combination will ever come up quite the same. That's quite a travel package. All of this is how Star Trek began, and it's also something of what it's about. I am an alien, <laughs> and so are you. And yet, and this is the loveliest thing of all, somehow we're also part of each other and part of everything that is. I don't know if this has a moral or not. Maybe it's don't sit inside soap gardens too long, unless you enjoy traveling. <laughs>